gold, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, and we always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. the apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. 
For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God, put to death in the flesh. He was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, And he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me. But you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Good afternoon. What a great joy it is for us to be able to come together today into the house of the Lord to come and celebrate this Mass and to receive, for you, all of you in the First Communion class, Holy Communion for the first time. What a great day and what a great joy it is. And I know know how uh, difficult it must be for all those who are at home, but uh, you're here with us, I know, in spirit and uh, probably watching on YouTube and maybe the little thing's still spinning. I don't know. Uh, you, maybe you got a picture. Maybe you don't. I don't know. But uh, hopefully it works out for you and uh, hopefully you can join with us today and, and be able to watch um, your, uh, your family members, kids, grandkids, uh, receive Holy Communion today for the first time. And so kids, I know that you are uh, excited about today. You've been preparing for this for a long time. And looking forward to it, and so I know we had to delay it a little bit, but um, I know that you are excited, and and we are very excited for you, because uh, it is a great, great day. It's a a day where you will take one more step closer to being fully initiated in the Catholic faith. It's one more step to being fully initiated into the Catholic faith. So you're going to be a little bit closer to being a full-blown, you're already a Catholic, but a fully initiated Catholic in the faith. And uh, you're going to receive Jesus, who is truly present to us in Holy Communion. It's a great thing. It's awesome. Uh, You know that uh, for the last couple months, two and a half months or so, uh, we haven't been able, we've been having Mass, but you have to watch Mass on TV, and you have, or the last couple weeks we had to watch, we we, we were able to go to Mass, but outside. And so this weekend, really yesterday, was the first day in a couple of months that we were able to have mass here in church and so there's a 
you know, the church is an important place, right? Because the church is the place that is dedicated to be the place where God is here on earth. It's where God dwells. So we have Jesus that's in the tabernacle. I don't think you have a tabernacle in your house. Huh? Probably not. Nope. Uh, and so we have Jesus in the tabernacle in a church, in a Catholic church. And so this building, this place is dedicated to be a place where God dwells, where God lives. This is God's house. All throughout the Bible, God started off, uh, the very beginning of the Bible, it started off with the Garden of Eden. You all know that story, huh? Where you have Adam and Eve, and they have that little snake, and they get tempted to eat the fruit of the tree, and, and then they get kicked out. But what's happening in the garden is that uh, Adam and Eve are there living in the garden, and they live with God in the garden. The Bible says that God was walking with them in the garden. And so they are, God's living in the garden, Adam and Eve's living in the garden, they all living together. And then Adam and Eve has to leave because they disobeyed God, they didn't want God to be a part of their life anymore. That's not too good for Adam and Eve. And so then all of a sudden God has, uh, God, he has his, his people, his Israelite, uh, you know, Hebrew people, and God's, they go through the desert, you know, the story of going through the desert. Moses takes all of them through the Red Sea. They put the Red Sea in two, and there's a wall of water on the right and on the left, and they go through, uh, and they go out into the desert. And then all throughout the time in the desert, the Exodus, we call that, God is living with them, with his people, in a tent. But it's not like a little junky tent you get at Walmart. It's a really nice tent, you know, for God, right? It's a big tent. Uh, they call it the tabernacle. Right? It's a place where God dwells. We call that a tabernacle, but that's a, you know, it's a little bit different. And so, um, and so they have a tabernacle. God dwells in the tabernacle. And it says that, the Bible says that during the daytime, they would see God's presence. They would see God being there with them in a column of uh, cloud. Right? This, like, almost like maybe a big tornado, but like a friendly tornado, you know, like not a destroyed tornado. And so, like, this big column of cloud up to the sky. And then at nighttime, they had this big column of fire, like this big pillar of fire, you know? Like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what that would look like. But, uh, and that's how they knew that God was with them. And every time they moved, God went first, and then they all followed God. And then uh, when God would stop, they would set up the little tent, and then God would go and dwell you know, and go back into the tabernacle into the, and, and live in the tabernacle, in, the, in the, the fancy tent. And then, later on, they go into the promised land, they live there for a little while, they get into some trouble, uh, and then they come back and they, they, build, they end up building this, um, this temple that looked a lot like the tabernacle, the tent, but it's this big building, this temple. And it was in the temple that uh, they would offer up some sacrifices, they, they would uh, offer up some bulls and stuff like that. We don't do that anymore, thank goodness. We're gonna, oh, just <laughs> get all bloody and everything. And, uh, but they would offer up some incense, like we have today at Mass, or offer up incense. They would offer up, uh, they would light their candles, fancy candles and stuff like that. Kind of, we got some fancy candles here. And then they would, um, there was this place where God would live called the Holy of Holies. Um, and there was another thing, it was called the Ark of the Covenant. It was this box. And it kind of looked like that box up there, the tabernacle. It kind of looked like that. And, uh, and it's in that, or on, on top of that, really, that God lived among his people. So we have the garden, God lives with them. We have the desert, God lived with, them, with his people there. We have the, the temple, that God lived with his people there. And that's where God lived with his people for a very long time. And then Jesus came. And it wasn't long after Jesus came and Jesus died on the cross and he resurrected from the dead and he ascended into heaven and he sent the Holy Spirit. It wasn't long after that that some bad dudes called the Romans came and destroyed that temple. And so God didn't have a house. So the whole Bible, God is looking for a place to live with his people. We know that God lives in heaven. And that God is there in heaven and God doesn't leave heaven, you know, and that's where, that's where he is. But also, God wants to live among us because he loves us and he wants to be part of our, us to be part of his family, really. And 
be a part of our families. And he wants to be with us. He wants to be near to us. So we have this time where now God wants to live with us now. There's no fancy tent. There's no fancy temple. And so what does God have? God has churches. He has Catholic churches, tabernacles where God lives. And how do we know that God is in there? Because we can peek inside and we can see that the Eucharist is in every tabernacle and every church in the world. And Jesus says that my flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. This is my body, he says. This is my blood. So we know from Jesus' words that the Eucharist really is Jesus himself. He is, it is God himself who comes to live among us. But the secret is, and what we celebrate today, is that the, the church is not the only place that God wants to live. God doesn't only want to be put into the tabernacle and be here in Bro Bridge and live on Main Street. He wants to also live on whatever street you live on. <laughs> in your house, in your room, and in your heart. God wants to live there too. And so how does God make that happen? How does God make it happen that he lives in us, in our hearts, in the hearts of his sons and his daughters? He gives us the Eucharist. He gives us the Eucharist. He gives us himself. And so Jesus really, truly, today, will come and live in your heart in a new way that you've never experienced before. He'll come and live in your soul in a new way that you've never had before. Yes, God lives in your heart now, but in an even more incredible way, even more powerful way, after you receive communion, Jesus will live in your heart at that moment. And every single time you come to receive Holy Communion, you make, you're giving God a place to live here on earth, a place where he wants to live, which is in your heart. And so every day, we have to live a life where we are making sure that God has a good, solid place to live. We give him, you know, maybe some dinner, you know, some, uh, remember at, at supper time, big sign of the cross, you know, we uh, pray uh, the, the prayer before meals. Uh, maybe before we go to bed, we give God a place to go to bed. You know, when we say our prayers before we go to bed at night, God can, you know, God's there with us and we, he got a little pillow to lay his head on. That's nice. We've got a roof over his head. We bring God into our homes, right? So we, we give God a place to live and a place to dwell when we bring him into our hearts. And so every single day, uh, even if we receive the Eucharist, we don't receive the Eucharist every day, maybe every week, uh, but we give God a place to live. And that's what he wants. He wants to come and live with us. And so we have to make a commitment today as we receive Holy Communion. We have to make a commitment that we are going to always give God a place to live, a place to dwell that you've, you went to uh, confession not too long ago, you've got a clean heart, clean slate, and so you're going to try to live that forever. But if you mess up, you can always, you know, you go back to the box and you go to confession, and it's easy, it's simple, done. And then you go back to receive communion once again. Right? So we always want to try to have uh, a place for God to live and dwell. And so we're praying for you, we're very, very proud of you, we're very happy for you that you're able to receive Jesus today. I know that uh, your parents are very proud of you as well, and and uh, parents, I just want to say a word of gratitude to all of you and to all those uh, watching at home who have played any part in uh, bringing these kids here today uh, and making sure that they are, are able to show up, that they uh, have a pure and, and holy heart, uh, sanctified heart, that God can dwell within them. Uh, you're doing your part and you're making the church uh, a better place, uh, the world a better place as well by uh, bringing your kids here today. So thank you for that. Uh, and may God bless you and reward you for all the work that you put in to making this day possible, but not only this day, the next 10 years, 40 years, let's say, uh, uh, of their lives, helping them to follow Christ uh, each and every day of their lives. So God bless you, and uh, may God be with you today and, and every day as you celebrate this day with joy.
For our Pope Francis, Bishop Desitel, and our priests and deacons, that they may be close to Jesus in the Eucharist throughout their ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our parish of St. Bernard, that with the firm devotion to the Eucharist, there will be an increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life from our parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the First Communion class, that their hearts be open to receiving all the grace that the Lord wishes to give them through the Eucharist today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the parents and families of the candidates, that they may all have greater love and reverence for the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who are sick and suffering today, that they may see in the Eucharist how close the Lord comes to console us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. O God, whose conferral of grace makes just men out of wicked ones and bowls blessed men from the miserable, be present to our works, be present to your works, be present to your gifts, so that those who are justified by faith may not lack the strength and perseverance through Christ our Lord.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. St. Bernard of Clairvaux, and with all the saints, so in his constant intercession in your presence, 
we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, give, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at the passing in this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. In Christ our Lord, in whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray for every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Lord is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all and with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am now worthy that you should enter into my heart. But only say the word, and my soul shall be.
us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us we pray the fruits of this paschal sacrament, pour into our hearts the strength of the saving food through Christ our Lord. Uh, once again, congratulations to all of you who received Holy Communion for the first time today. It's a very, very special day, a great ceremony, uh, what a wonderful uh, way to, um, uh, to give thanks to the Lord, or come to Mass and, and, and uh, receive Holy Communion and lift up our hearts and minds to the Lord. Uh, and uh, so traditionally on the occasion of a, a person's first communion, uh, they'll receive, they'll be invested in the brown scapular. So the scapular is a ancient devotion to Our Lady, asking Our Lady for her help and protection. So, uh, kids, when you, you, today you're going to get the brown chapter because your parents are going to put it on you. And um, when you take it off, it's a good idea to take time to cross with it and kiss it. When you take it off, when you put it back on, just to uh, always have Mary there with you, uh, protecting you and praying for you. And so we're going to pray the very, very special prayers to invest you with the brown chapter. And as, during, in the middle of that, I'll instruct the parents to place it on them. Uh, and then afterwards, I'm going to bless, I'll go ahead and bless any articles that you have here with you so that you don't have to track me down and, you know, I have to put on a mask and bless the stuff. So uh, we'll just bless everything that's here already, and uh, and then we'll get the final blessing after that. So a bless, blessings abound. Receive this blessed scapular and beseech the Virgin Mary, that through her merit to be wear it without stain, may it defend you against all adversity and accompany you to eternal life. Amen. And so now at this time, parents, you would go ahead and invest your child with the scapular. Spirit upon each of these articles. 